Hey guys, this is Kev again from Kripke the Chameleon and Friends, and today we're going to take a look at my small apartment size Dubio Roach setup. It may look a bit bootleg, but it's truly efficient. This is a perfect example of why I prefer to keep dubias over hissing roaches. With every good colony, there's likely an infiltrator. This guy right here is a hissing roach, and he infiltrated my colony when I first started about two years ago. I got a bunch of little nymphs, dubia roaches, and for some reason, he just happened to be in there. The reason I don't like hissing roaches, because they are very obnoxious, as you can see. They can climb. Dubia roaches cannot climb smooth surfaces like glass, smooth plastic, and they do not smell, and they do not fly. So I much prefer to have dubia roaches over hissing roaches, because this guy here can climb. For some reason, he bred within the group as well, and I had a few of them, and those were the first ones I fed off, but I just kept this one as a souvenir. And that's pretty much just about it, but no more hissing roaches for me. All the noise that you're hearing in here is just this one guy, nobody else. So let's get back to the project. The reason why I said I go with small apartment size, as you notice with my superworm colony and my mealworm colony, I'm doing the same with my dubias. Because I only have a small amount of reptiles and I don't want to have any large scale breeding projects going on. So this is definitely suitable for my needs. If I find myself with way too much of any particular insect, I'll put them up in Craigslist. As you can see, I have a lot of dubia roaches currently, so some of them are going to be moving out. I'll obviously keep my little token hissing roach but as you can see I have a small bin here the reason why you want to have two bins because you will use one for cleaning when you want to dump them out while you're cleaning the primary enclosure and another thing too I also mentioned bootleg the reason why I said bootleg is because this is not a pretty looking bin this is one of my first projects I didn't have proper cutting tools as you can see here I have one of those box cutters carpet cutters one of those heavy duty ones and if you want to go a little more extreme you can always use the power tools if you have any but this wasn't a pretty project so that's why i say it's kind of bootleg i just heated up a knife cut the top use a glue gun and seal the top so no one can escape but it can also have ventilation so you want to have two of these small little bins and this is the spear bin some of these things here are considered optional sometimes people use substrate this is Eco Earth. I don't use any substrate, I just keep it bare bottom. If you're concerned about anyone escaping, you can get tape, tape along the inner lining. Right here, if you're not gonna properly feed your insects, like you're just giving them basic foods, I also have a little bin here where I gut load them. That's if I'm not gonna feed them anything robust. Some of the things that's mandatory will be like a heat mat, Right here, the water crystals that I didn't use for my crickets, I'll be using for the dubia roaches, so you'll need a little cup. I have my foil with a lid, this is where I put the foods. You may want to get the prong, tong, whatever you want to call it, because you don't want to be putting your hands holding dubias, even though they're clean, I'm not going to touch them. Again, we have a utility tool so you can cut the plastic on the top. Right here, we have our glue gun. And you'll notice in all my projects, I keep talking about these egg trays. They're gonna definitely come in handy. So consider getting these, because you're gonna use them wild scale across the board. And right here, we have the mesh. This is where you use for the ventilation at the top. So that's just the basics of what I have. So let's go ahead and set this up. So let's just quickly go over this so you can see how I set it up. Again, I apologize to those who may have issue if they think it wasn't set up pretty enough like for example how this was cut, but I don't believe in being pretentious. This is how they live, this is what they're kept in. I don't think just for a YouTube video I should be pretentious and just try to create something just for the look. This is what it is in reality, so I'm just keeping it real. Right here I have the trays, you'll notice I have them sideways because I find it more effective to give not only floor room so they can get around a little more, but also whenever they poop, etc., it can fall to the bottom and not gather up in just a the top areas so it's a lot cleaner this way 
So I give them a lot of different fruits and vegetables. I'm also going to add a little bit of my gut load that I did, so be sure to check that video out. Right over here, you'll notice we have the water crystals. I put a little bridge of life so the babies can climb over and get in there. The adults usually typically don't have a problem with that. And if I go over here, this is the other bin. Since I said get two, I typically will put a heat mat in here because dubias cannot handle temperatures under 70 degrees. They will die. So be sure to get a heat mat, keep it around anywhere in mid 80s. And the way to help ensure that is not only getting yourself a heat gun, but also I have this adjustable heat mat. So you can adjust the heat depending on the temperatures, especially if you're living somewhere like New York where it's cold, you can adjust the heat accordingly. So I'll go ahead and put these guys in here. I'm just gonna add some gut load and that's typically it. So let's just take a quick look of some of the benefits of the Dubia Roaches. So now that everyone is congregating and having some food and settling in into their quarters, this is where they live over the next few days. I'm going to start moving these guys out and putting them on Craigslist. What I do from here, I just simply take my little bootleg lid, I put it to the top, and I take this rubber band and I just wrap it around the entire enclosure. And the reason why I do it, because obviously we have our little resident hissing roach who can move around and we're definitely not gonna to tolerate anyone escaping. So I go ahead and I just simply put this right on top where I have my super worms and it definitely fits in that little area. I want everything contained within a specific area because I don't have too many rooms to keep these feeders and this is definitely gonna be more on a smaller scale. So this is Kev again from Kripke the Chameleon and Friends. Please be sure to subscribe and give us a like and hit that alert button. And as always, one love and God bless. Take care, guys.